This is part 36 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss why and how to create a custom validation attribute in Blazor. For most use cases, ASP.NET Core has several built-in validation attributes. We can see some of the common built-in attributes here. Now, if we have a validation requirement that we cannot implement using these built-in attributes, we can always create a custom validation attribute. Now, let's understand a use case for creating a custom validation attribute with an example. So, here is what we want to be able to do. On this edit employee form, we only want to allow email address with the domain name prajimtech.com. If any other email domain is used, we want to display a validation error. In this example, we have used dell.com. So we want to display the validation error domain must be prajimtech.com. We can very easily achieve this using the built-in regular expression validator. But let's create a custom validator. To create a custom validator, we create a class and derive from the validation attribute class. All the built-in validation attributes derive from this class and this class is present in this namespace system.componentmodel.dataannotations. This validation attribute class has got one method is valid which our custom validator class needs to override. It is in this method we write our custom validation logic. If validation succeeds, meaning in our case, if the email domain is prejimtech.com, we return null, indicating that there are no validation errors. Otherwise, we return a validation result object. And this object has got two parameters, the error message that we want to display and the field with which we want to associate this error message. And then we can use this custom validator like any other built-in validator. In the interest of time, I've already done a few things. To our models project, I added this folder, custom validators. And inside this folder, I created this class file. Email domain validator is our custom validator class and it derives from the built-in validation attribute class. And we already know this class is in this namespace. Our obvious next step is to override isValid method. And the easiest way to do that is to type the keyword override and then press the spacebar. We then see all the methods that we can override. And the method that we want to override is isValid. There are two overloaded versions of this method. We want to override this overloaded version which takes two parameters. This incoming parameter carries the email address the user has provided. And here is the logic to validate if the email domain is prejimtech.com. So here we are converting the value to string and then splitting that string using the at character in the email address. So what we get back is a string array with two elements in it. The first element is the email and the second element is the domain name. So we are converting the domain name to uppercase and then comparing that with this uppercase string prejimtech.com. If they match, then our validation succeeded. So we simply return null to indicate there are no validation errors. Otherwise, we return a new validation result object. This object takes two parameters, the validation error message itself and the member name with which we want this error message to be associated with. In our case, we're going to use this email domain validator on the email property of our employee class. So this member name here is going to associate this validation error message with the email property. At this point, all that is left to do is use this custom validator like any other built-in validator. We want to use it in our employee class. So let's open employee.cs file and decorate the email property with our custom validation attribute. And we also need to bring in the required namespace. Let's build our solution and take a look at the browser. We are on the edit employee form. Let's change the email domain to something else, dell.com for example. And then when we tab out, notice we get the validation error as expected. At the moment, the domain name prejimtech.com is hard-coded within our custom validator. This means we can only use this to validate the domain prejimtech.com. We cannot use it with other domains. We want it to be more reusable. Instead of hard-coding the domain name here, we want to be able to pass it as a parameter. For that, all we need to do is include a public property. The property type is string and let's call this property allowed domain. Now we can remove this hard-coded domain name and use our property. We obviously need to convert this also to uppercase. 
Even in the error message, we don't want to use the hard-coded domain name. We instead want to use our property allowed domain. So let's use C sharp string interpolation. Next, within our employee class, where we are using the email domain validator, notice from the IntelliSense, we now see the property allowed domain. And using this, we can specify a domain name. Let's build our changes and take one more look at the browser. When we tab out, it works the same way as before. In addition to the allowed domain property, notice from the IntelliSense, we also have this error message property. If you're wondering, where is this coming from? Well, we inherited it from validation attribute class. Now, what we want to do is, instead of using this validation message, we want to specify our own validation message using the error message property. Notice the error message that we see here is still coming from our custom validator. So we see this message. We don't see the message that we have specified right here. That's because this message that we are returning is overriding this error message. Now, if you want to be able to use this error message, instead of specifying this custom message here, use the base class error message property. Notice when I have the mouse over this, you can see this is coming from the base class validation attribute. There we go. We now see the error message that we have specified right here. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you.